Milling Through History presents The Ark of the Covenant. In Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, audiences were introduced not only to the titular character of Indiana Jones, but the very first treasure that he would ever go out to find on the big screen, that being the Ark of the Covenant. Now, the Ark itself is a rather unique treasure, one that people have been searching for for thousands of years. In fact, its own disappearance is a great mystery in and of itself. And so, as we look at the Ark of the Covenant, it's important to understand exactly the context in which it was created and how it is that it became such a unique, important, not only biblical uh, archaeological discovery or treasure to find, but also something that would have an even bigger impact on humanity as a whole. According to the Bible in the book of Exodus, Moses had the ark built in order to hold the broken tablets of the Ten Commandments. And, in addition to the tablets, the ark would hold the staff of Aaron and manna which was sent by God to feed the Hebrews. During the 40 years in the desert and the subsequent conquest of Canaan, the ark would be at the head of the Hebrew column, leading its people into the Holy Land and effectively establishing the promised land that God gave to the Israelites. Now, while waging war against the Philistines, the ark was captured in battle. And yet, the Philistines found that their possession of the ark meant misfortune for them. And for seven months, this would continue to incur, incur to the Philistine people until they returned the ark back to the Israelites. Now, during the reign of King David, the ark would find a permanent home in Jerusalem. And eventually, his son Solomon would build the great temple, one of the seven wonders of the world. And the last time the ark was ever seen, or at least even mentioned in the Bible, was during the reign of King Hezekiah, during the siege of Jerusalem by the Assyrians. And it was during the siege by the Assyrians that the ark disappears. What happened to it? Well, there's a great deal of speculation about it. There are those who believe that the ark was moved into an underground tunnel underneath the temple, and that it's residing in some secret chamber even to this day. Then there's reports that the Ark was smuggled out of Jerusalem and was safely sent off to a Jewish colony elsewhere in the, uh, in the biblical world. And then there is one other theory that says that the Assyrians captured the Ark and then destroyed it, namely as a method of trying to prove their dominance over whatever nation's god they were conquering. And this is really where much of the mystery lies. Which particular rendition do you want to believe in? Well... Most people believe the Ark still exists, and in fact, it could be somewhere in the known world. So where did the Ark of the Covenant disappear to? Well, one likely location is that of Ethiopia. The Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church in Aksum claims to have the Ark of the Covenant at the Church of Our Lady Mary of Zion. According to tradition, the Ark was brought to Ethiopia by Menelik I, and while there is a great deal of debate about the legitimacy of the Ark being there, it is still widely believed that this claim is the most legitimate of them all. In fact, the church itself has its own army that protects it, and only one priest is allowed to go inside and see the Ark. According to his own description, it is very much like that found in the Bible and even somewhat depicted on the screen in Indiana Jones. A second theory is that it's actually found in southern Africa. According to the Lemba people of South Africa and Zimbabwe, their ancestors would carry the Ark south, and genetic testing amongst these people has proven that they did have ancestors who came from the Middle East, and this gives a little bit more credence to their claim. Now, one of the things that is rather unique is that their version of the Ark of the Covenant is not like the one that is traditionally found in pictures or in movies. Rather, the Ark looks more like a drum that's being carried on poles. And so, effectively, it's just the title that survives. But the physical, actual item that is supposed to be the Ark that we all know and think of no longer exists. The third possible location is Rome. And according to some sources, there were eyewitness accounts of the Ark being seen in the Basilica of St. John uh, Lateran. Now, it remained there until the Basilica was burned down, but once again, disappears. The only problem with this particular story is that it's just one story that says the Ark was there, but it doesn't indicate 
when the ark arrived or how it stayed or why it even disappeared. And so some people do question whether or not this particular story is true. The final location for the, uh, where the ark might be is, ironically enough, in Ireland. Between 1899 and 1902, British archaeologists dug at the hill of Tara, where legend says the Egyptian princess uh, T. Tefi brought the ark when uh, she married King Aramon. Now, this legend was refuted in 1992 through a non-invasive survey which found that the location of her burial had nothing located there whatsoever. And when it comes to the Irish story, it's understandable that sometimes people want to give a bit more credence and importance to uh, locations and uh, figures that date back long enough to try to tie it with biblical stories. But wherever the Ark of the Covenant is, the one thing that everyone can agree upon is, is that to have possession of the Ark means you have a method which will allow you to communicate with God. And so perhaps it is this fascination and desire to speak with the Almighty that makes people continue to hunt for the Ark of the Covenant. And perhaps, who knows, one day it could be discovered. In which case, perhaps many of the burning questions we all have a great desire to know will finally... For more information, please consider these suggested titles. Be sure to click on the left-hand side of the screen to subscribe to our show, and on the right-hand side for our latest episode. And we will see you again for the next episode of Milling Through History.